everyone, welcome to a yoga video. I am joined by the wonderful Sophie Deer, who is a yoga instructor, and we've been practicing together for the last couple of months, and my practice has just come so, so far since I've been practicing with you. So I thought it would be really lovely to do a 30-minute yoga flow. Sophie's already warned me that it's pretty hard, so be prepared. All you need is just a mat and a block, so enjoy. Hi, everyone. Okay, we're going to start uh, on all fours, and we're going to start by moving through some cat-cows. So just make sure your hands are underneath your shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And just when you're ready, start to move through some cat-cows, arching and rounding the spine. And do your best to use your breath. So we want to come into the breath straight away. So your inhale opens the chest, and your exhale allows you to round into the spine. And then just taking this moment to really notice how your body feels. And then let's just add in some additional movement. So kind of whatever feels good for you. Make this really intuitive. So kind of getting into your own little juicy spots, your own tight areas. And sway the hips a little bit more. Move the shoulders a little bit more. The head and neck. And really starting to deepen that breath. So you're trying to breathe into the chest, the ribs, and all the way down into the tummy as well. Okay, from here, we're just going to tuck the toes, lift the hips, and come back into a downward facing dog. And then in your downward facing dog, same thing, be really intuitive, just start to walk out your dog, any movement that feels good in the body, maybe swaying the hips from side to side. And then together, let's just take a big breath in through the nose, and clear it out through the mouth. From here, inhale, tip forwards into a plank pose, so shoulders over the wrists. Just take a moment to pause so you can find a really nice, strong high plank. So it's like you're pressing the mat away. There's a sense of rounding through the upper back, like the shoulder blades are moving apart from one another. And then the legs are really active as well. So you're squeezing the bum, thighs engaged. Okay, big breath in. And then on your exhale, just lower knees and then chest. Come all the way down, lots of control. Okay, big breath in to a baby cobra. So we're going to lift through the chest, like you're traction through the... The hands, like the hands want to traction back as the chest moves forwards. Big breath in. And on your exhale, let's press back, downward facing dog. Okay, from your down dog, we're going to slowly walk the feet to the hands and come into a rag doll at the front of the mat. So feet roughly hit with distance apart. And then just sway the body from side to side, releasing through the back of the neck. And then let's interlace the fingers behind the back, squeeze the shoulder blades, drop the arms up and over the head. Big breaths. Let's release the hands down to the mat. We're going to heel toe the feet together. Take an inhale root to rise. So I want you to sweep to stand, come all the way up, reaching super tall to lift. And then as you exhale, I want you to fold just halfway down. You're going to reach your arms out in front. So here, make sure the legs are really switched on. So we're loading the back of the body, and I want you to find strength in the back of the body as well as this sense of stretch. So squeeze the bum. Imagine you've got a block in between your thighs. You're hugging onto that block. And then think about moving the chest forwards and press the tailbone back. Should feel quite tough. One more big breath in. On your exhale, release. Come all the way down to the mat into your forward fold. Okay, inhale, look up, lengthen through a flat back, so pull the shoulders back. As you exhale, plant the hands. We're going to step just the right foot back, lower the right knee. From here, inhale, press the hips forwards, just slightly lift through the chest. And then as you exhale, walk it back, flex the left foot, almost like you're dragging the left heel back, so that left leg is really active and strong. On your inhale, let's walk forwards, lift through the chest. On your exhale, walk it back again. Last one, inhale to come forwards, press the hips forwards, and on your exhale, walk it back, really drag that left heel back towards you. Okay, this time, inhale to walk forwards, and then as you exhale, plant the hands, we're going to step back to a strong high plank, big breath in here, and on your exhale, your choice, lower down, knees and chest or chaturanga. Inhale to a cobra or upward facing dog, again, your choice. And then exhale to move it back to a downward facing dog. Okay, a couple of big breaths here. So in your downward facing dog, I want you to think about really pressing the mat away. So you want to think about spreading the fingers wide and connecting through all the knuckles. 
all the fingers. And then on your next exhale, we're going to bend the knees, look forward. Step the right foot and then the left. Inhale to a flat back, so shoulders pull back. And exhale to fold and tuck the chin. Okay, let's inhale, sweep to stand. So coming all the way out, reaching super tall. Exhale, fold, same thing, halfway down. Reach the arms out in front. So if you struggle with this, just bring your hands back to heart center. So if it feels a bit tough, hands can come back towards the heart center. Now I want you to think about almost pressing your tailbone up and back, and then chest forwards and up as well. Big breaths. One more big breath in. As you exhale, slowly fold into your legs. Good, inhale, let's look up, lengthen halfway. And then as you exhale, we're gonna plant the hands, step the left foot back this time. Lower the left knee. Inhale, hips forwards and lift the chest. And exhale to walk it back, flexing that right foot. Almost like you're trying to drag the heel back in space. Inhale to walk forwards, lift through the chest. And exhale to walk it back. Use your breath, last one. Inhale to come forwards in your own time. And exhale to walk it back. Good, this time inhale, come forwards. As you exhale, plant the hands, you're going to step back to a strong high plank. Big breath in here. And then exhale, lower down your choice. So knees and chest or chaturanga. Big breath into your back bend, so cobra or up dog. And then big breath out to your downward facing dog. So remember, we're creating this lovely V shape in our downward facing dog. So the back of the body is feeling really lengthened, but we want to bring some strength to this as well. So try and squeeze the muscles of the bum. And again, imagine that block in between your legs and you're hugging onto that block. Okay, on your next exhale, we bend the knees, look forward. So you're going to step the left foot and then the right. Inhale to a flat back. And exhale to fold. This time, inhale, chair pose. So let's bend the knees and lift the chest. Big breath in. And then as you exhale, fold straight away. Inhale, look up, lengthen through a flat back. Exhale, plant the hands. You can step or float back. Lower down your choice, or skip out your vinyasa and just go straight back to a downward facing dog. So totally up to you. Once you're in your down dog, inhale, right leg moves up and back behind. And then as you exhale, you're going to step through, keep the back heel lifted, take an inhale, high lunge. On your exhale, we're going to lean forwards, you're going to sweep your arms back, take a moment to pause here. I want you to imagine that you're trying to traction your right heel back and your left toes forwards. So there should be that strength through the legs. On your inhale, arms move forwards, strong arms. And on your exhale, spin the back heel, open it wide, warrior two. Good, let's inhale, reverse your warrior, so reach super tall. And then as you exhale, spin both hands down to the mat. You're gonna step back to your plank, either a vinyasa or straight to your downward facing dog. So totally up to you. Remember, you can skip out your vinyasas at any time. Once you're there, inhale, left leg moves up and back. And then as you exhale, step through, back heel stays lifted. Inhale, strong high lunge. Good. As you exhale, we're going to lean forward, sweep the arms back. Just take a moment to pause. I want you to traction left heel back, right toes forwards. Like everything is zipping up. On your inhale, arms move forwards. And on your exhale, spin the back heel, open it wide, warrior two. Good. Inhale, reverse it, reaching super tall. And then exhale, bring both hands down to the mat. Let's step back to plank, either a vinyasa or straight to a downward facing dog. So totally up to you. You kind of follow your breath and notice if you're out of breath, then maybe just think about skipping out your vinyasas. Okay, so once you're in your downward facing dog, I'm going to take an inhale, sweep the right leg up and back behind again. As you exhale, step through, back heels lifted. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, lean forwards and sweep the arms back. Use your breath. Inhale, arms move forwards. Exhale, spin the back heel, open wide, warrior two. Inhale to reverse, reaching super tall. Exhale, bring both hands down to the mat. Step it back, same thing. Either vinyasa or straight to a downward facing dog. Big breath in on your back bend. Big breath out on your downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg moves up and back. As you exhale, step through, back heels lifted, inhale, high lunge. Exhale, lean forwards and sweep the arms back. Inhale, arms are going to move forwards. Exhale, open it wide, warrior two. 
Good big breath in to reverse your warrior. And on the next, I'll bring both hands down to the mat. Again, stepping it back, either a vinyasa or straight back to your downward facing dog. And just think, each time you move through a vinyasa, it's like you reset the focus and you reset the breath. From your down dog, let's bend the knees, look forward. You can either step or float to the front, your choice. Inhale, lengthen flat back and exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Let's bend the knees and lift the chest. As you exhale, hands to heart center, you're going to twist over to the right. Left elbow wraps around that right thigh, open through the chest. So if you want to, if you have variations here, maybe you want to open arms. Maybe you want to come into a side crow, go for it. Otherwise, staying here, really finding your breath, finding your twist. Think collarbones nice and wide. And then when you're ready, we'll meet in a chair pose, big breath in. Exhale, hands to heart center. We're going to twist to the left. Right elbow wraps around, open through the chest. Again, if you want to move through variations, go for it. Otherwise, focus on your twist. Think about squeezing the muscles of the bum, inner thighs, and open the chest. Good. We meet in the chair pose. Big breath in. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen through a flat back. And then exhale, plant the hands. Step or float. Vinyasa will just go straight back to your downward facing dog. Big, big breaths. Okay, so from here, we're going to take an inhale, sweep the right leg up and back behind. As you exhale, knee to nose, so shift the weight forwards and round the upper back. Good, inhale, let's move that leg up and back behind. Exhale, knee to right upper arm. Don't collapse the shoulders, keep the upper back nice and rounded. Inhale, move that leg up and back. Exhale, knee across the body, so you go left upper arm, nice and tight. Good, inhale up and back. And then as you exhale, we're going to step through. Keep the back heel lifted. Sorry, no, don't keep the back heel lifted. Lower the back knee, so left knee down. Okay, from here, we're going to take the block. Don't want to miss out this one. You're going to pop the block to the crease of that left knee. And then you're going to pick up the left foot. You're going to point the toes and squeeze the heel in towards the bum. Reach the arms tall. So you're like in a low lunge. But you've got this sensation of having to hug the block in, in that back leg, which means that that left hamstring, left butt cheek should be working hard. Yeah. <laughs> it should, it might feel a little bit crampy because our hamstrings tend to be weak. Good. A couple more breaths here. Keep hugging it in like you're trying to crush that block. Good. Okay. From here, take the block. Pop it on your head. Okay. The block's going to want to wobble. It's a little bit funky now. Okay, we're going to tuck the back toes. We're going to reach the arms up to the sky. And you're going to lift the back knee and try not to drop that block. Good, find your focus. Okay, so with our lunge variations today, we're really thinking about that sense of traction in. So right heel moving backwards, left toes moving forwards. Should really start to switch on the inner thighs. Big breaths. Okay, take your block in between your palms. Reach the arms forwards. Let your chest move forward. So we're in like an arrow lunge like we were before, but this time with the block. Now press the palms towards that block. Like you're really, really hugging in towards that block. Keep pressing. Keep tractioning the feet towards one another. I'm shaking already. Okay, from here, how slowly can you move into a warrior three? So you're going to lift the left leg without trying to kind of kick up. Reach the arms forwards, or if you want to, Hands back towards your chest. Get the left leg active and strong. And then think, can you press your hands even more into that block? Squeeze the right butt cheek. Good. Okay, from here, left knee drawing up towards the chest. Flex the left foot. Just take a moment to kind of breathe. Reset your focus. And then get the right leg really strong. So here, the right knee might want to bend. Can you press the back of the knee towards the back of your mat? Okay, taking the block again, pop it behind that left knee. So it's like in the left knee crease. Hug, squeeze it in. We're coming back to a scorpion variation of our warrior three. So you can just go hands to heart center. Now lift the left knee. The left knee won't want to lift. Lift it. Lift it as high as that hip. Hug the block in. Ooh, wobbly. <laughs> Keep hugging like the shin is really, really pulling in. I'm falling all over the place. Okay, so from here, 
going to start to come back up to stand. I want you to hug, hug, hug that block. Try not to drop it. Good. Take the block in the hands. From here, how slowly can you move back to a high lunge? So you're going to move back like a slow motion ninja warrior. Really, really slow. Good. Stepping that left foot back. Reach the arms up. Fantastic. Okay. From here, press into the block with those palms. So the shoulders are working really hard. The muscles of the arms, the chest are working really hard. Let your shoulders move towards your ears. Keep crushing the block. Keep tractioning the feet towards one another. Breathe. Good. Release the block down to the side. Just forget about that for a moment. Hands to heart center. Big breath in. And then exhale, twist to the right. So left elbow across the right thigh. If you want to move into any other variations, you might want to come into your split leg side crow from here. You might want to open arms. Or you might want to take a bind. Totally up to you. Again, breathe. Use the breath to find the twist. One more big breath in. And then exhale. Let's bring the hands down to the mat. We're going to step back. Vinyasa or straight to a downward facing dog. Your choice. And then just breathe into the right hand side of the body. Quite tough that, right? Uh, okay, so we've just got one more side. So inhale, left leg is going to move up and back just when you're ready. Exhale, knee to nose. So shift the weight forwards, round into the upper back. Good, inhale, left leg sweeps high. Exhale, knee to the left upper arm. Keep the shoulder blades spreading apart from one another. Inhale, let's move that leg up and back. And then exhale, knee across the body, right upper arm, nice and tight. Good. Inhale, let's move that leg up and back. As you exhale, you're going to step through and you're going to lower the back knee. Okay, this is the, where the block comes in again. So pop the block to the crease of that uh, knee. Then you're going to hug the foot in, point the toes, and then you can reach the arms up to the sky. So you're in your low lunge, but you've got the block and you've got, you're working your hamstring even more. Keep hugging the heel towards the bum. Squeeze. Try to lift tall. Can you squeeze your bum even more? Breathe. Good. Okay, from here, take hold of the block, and we pop it on our heads. If you have, like, one of the foam blocks, this is a lot easier. If you've got a cork block, it's a lot heavier. So reach your arms up, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, lift. So you're in your high lunge, but you've got this addition to kind of find more focus, more balance. So I want you to think left heel tractioning back, right toes tractioning forwards. You should switch on the muscles of the legs much, much more. Breathe. Take the block in the hands, in between the palms. You're going to reach the arms forwards. Hover the chest nice and low. Press the palms against that block. Hug, hug, hug. Traction the feet towards one another. Now how slowly can you lift up to your warrior three? Try not to kick up. Amazing transition, Naomi. Okay, kicking that back leg nice and far away. Keep the left leg really active and strong. Good, okay. From here, we're going to slowly draw the right knee in towards the chest. Flex the right foot. Hug it in. Good, take your time. If you're wobbly, totally normal. I find the sequence really hard myself. Okay, so from here, once you've got that sense of feeling really grounded, feeling really tall, you're going to start to pop the block behind that right knee. Now hug the block in as you move to a scorpion version of your warrior three, which just basically means you're going to hug the heel towards the bum. Good. Keep the knee nice and lifted. If you can, get it as high as the hip. Hug that block in. The hamstring should be screaming. Good. Okay, from here, how slowly can you come back up to stand? Try and keep the block behind that knee, lifting up, take the block in the hands, okay, and then from here, super slow, like that slow motion, ninja warrior coming back to a high lunge, lots and lots of focus, step it back, reach the arms up, and then again, press the hands against the block, press, 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 like you're really trying to crush the block with those palms, let the shoulders move towards the ears, keep tracking the feet towards one another. Breathe. Good. Let's pop the block down to the side. Forget about that for now. Hands to heart center. We're going to twist over to the left. Right elbow wraps around. You take your variation. And remember, you can always lower the back knee. So if you want to lower the back knee, 
that just makes you, allows you to focus more on the twist rather than um, the balance and finding strength. So totally up to you. Okay, one more big breath in. As you exhale, let's bring both hands down to the mat. Step it back, either a vinyasa or straight to a downward facing dog, your choice. Here to cave from here, let's just take a moment in puppy dog. So reach, release your knees down, hips stay above the knees and you're going to reach your arms forwards. Soften the forehead down to the mat. If you practice different variations here, go for it. So some of you might want to spider the fingers, I think that's always quite a nice uh, shoulder opener. Some of you might bring the chin to the mat, totally up to you. But just basically take a moment to find your breath. Okay, starting to lift back up to a downward facing dog. I hope everyone's okay. Okay, so from our downward facing dog, we're going to bend the knees, look forwards. You can step or float to the front of the mat, your choice. Inhale to a flat back and exhale to fold and tuck the chin. Let's inhale, sweep to stands. So we're just going through a vinyasa to reset. And exhale, fold all the way down, release the back of the neck. Inhale through a flat back. Exhale, plant the hand, step or float, vinyasa, or straight to your downward facing dog. Okay, so for this le next little bit, uh, I'm going to get us actually just to lower the knees a moment, because I want to kind of just show you guys this transition. It's been something I've been working on in uh, my classes. I think it's a really nice transition. So we're going to go from a side plank, and what we're going to want to do is step forwards, into a lizard pose. And what tends to happen is we just rush it and we come forwards like this with no control. So what I want you to think about doing is we're going to come from our side plank. We're going to bend the right knee. You're going to take hold of the back of the leg, the back of the thigh, hug that thigh in. Then what you're going to do is spin onto the left toes first, see how wobbly it is, and super, super slowly step that right foot forwards and you're in your lizard. We're going to give it a go. Do not worry if it goes completely wrong. So we'll start in a downward facing dog. On your inhale, tip forwards into a plank. As you exhale, heels to the left, right arm reaches tall. So you've obviously got loads of variations you can practice in your side plank. Just try and get the body really strong. So switch on all your muscles, squeeze the bum, belly in, and then we're going to start that transition. So draw the right knee towards the chest. Take hold of the back of the thigh. Hug that thigh in, so it's like you take some of the weight of the leg. Then spin onto the left toes. Give it a go. How slowly can you step that foot forwards? Amazing, Amy. Okay, from here, lizard pose. So your variation, if you want to keep the back knee lifted, feel free to. If you want to come onto forearms, you can. Maybe use a block underneath your forearms. Totally up to you. Some of you, I know me and Naomi tend to practice this a little bit. Taking hold of the back foot is a really nice one. So you take your right hand to your left foot. You take the outer edge of the foot. It's just one variation. And you might even come down onto the left forearm. It's up to you. Okay, and then from here, once you've done that juicy stretch, you can come over into a pigeon pose. So we're going to move the right foot over to the left. The knee's going to drop out to the right. We're going to walk the left leg back. And then prop yourself up if you need to. Maybe coming onto forearms. Maybe you reach your arms all the way out in front. It kind of depends on how your body feels. But in your pigeon pose, you definitely want to feel a stretch, kind of outer right hip, right thigh area. So your glute and your IT band. And if you don't, if you feel it in your knee, then roll over onto your backs and take your figure of four stretch instead. Okay, from here, we're going to start to think about lifting up. I'm going to come back into a strong high plank. Good, from our strong high plank, big breath in. Exhale, lower knees, and then chest. We're going to come all the way down onto the belly. Okay, so from here, we're going to bend the knees. You're going to catch hold of the outside or the inside of the feet, your choice. And then you're going to take an inhale to kick and lift. Lifting up, squeeze the bum. Think chest forwards and up. Couple more breaths, really use the muscles of the bum. One more big breath in. 
And then exhale, release. Just place your head to one side. You can use your arms as a pillow, wiggle out your hips. Okay, and then from here, just simply pressing back to your downward facing dog. And then from your downward facing dog, let's inhale, tip forwards into your plank. Exhale, heels to the right, left arm to the sky. You're on your side plank, Vashisthasana. And making sure that the body is really, really strong. You're pressing the mat away. And then let's think about that transition. So left knee starts to hug in. You take hold of the back of the thigh. Really, really pull that thigh in. Now come onto the right toes. Move super slow to step the left foot forwards. Good. Okay. And then from here, your choice of lizard. So you might choose a stronger lizard with your back knee lifted. You might think about coming onto forearms. You might take hold of the back foot with the left arm, your choice. So it kind of depends whether you want to work strength or flexibility. Or maybe you just keep changing it up in your practice. It's a really nice thing to do is just find that balance between strength and flexibility. Breathe. Good, okay, coming into your pigeon. So the left foot's going to move out to the right. The knee's going to drop out to the left. And you're going to start to come onto forearms. Walk the back leg a bit further back. And then it's your variation here. So some of you might reach your arms forward. Some of you might release your head down towards the mat or maybe towards a block. That's always a nice way to make sure the back of the neck is released. Big breaths. So from our pigeon pose, we're just going to lift up to a strong high plank. And then it's your choice. You can either move through a vinyasa or just tip straight back to a downward facing dog. So however you're feeling, go where you need to go. Okay, from our downward facing dog, let's just simply step through to a seated position. If you want to float, hop, that's absolutely fine. And then from seated, bring the soles of the feet onto the mat, reach the arms out in front. And we're going to slowly roll all the way down to the mat. Keep the belly in, so it's like you're lifting and lengthening the lower belly. Good, moving super slowly with control. Once you get there, let's just hug the knees in towards the chest. Gently rock from side to side. And then from here, let's come into a back bend of your choice. So you can take a bridge. Maybe you want to take a wheel. Maybe you want to pop the block underneath your pelvis and come into a supported bridge. So I'm just going to come into a normal bridge pose, lifting my hips up. And just remember, wherever you go, bridge or wheel, if you're coming into an active pose, make sure that the muscles of the bum are really switched on. So think about squeezing sides of the butt cheeks in and then breathe. Good. And then when you're ready, just peeling the spine all the way down to the mat. Hugging the knees in towards the chest again and rocking from side to side. Okay, let's take a happy baby. So you can take hold of the outside edges of the feet or the ankles. Maybe you take hold of the back of the thighs if this feels a little bit uncomfortable. And rocking from side to side with your eyes closed. So as we move towards the end of the practice, having the eyes closed is a really nice thing to do just so you can kind of start to draw all your attention inwards. And we're going to simply end with a twist. So knees are going to drop over to the right, head over to the left, arms into a wide T. And if it feels good, maybe cross one leg over the other. But totally up to you. Whatever variation of your twist feels good. And then just breathe the length of your spine. And just take a moment to really notice how the body feels after your practice. And then let's draw the knees to centre. We'll come straight onto the other side. So heading over to the left. And then looking over to the right. Close the eyes when you're ready. And then just breathe into all the sensations. So some of you might feel it more in the shoulder. Some of you more in the spine. Some of you more kind of down through the outer hip. Good. And then just coming back to centre. Give yourself a final little hug, final little squeeze, rocking from side to side. And then let's end together with a really big breath in through the nose. 
and then clear it out through the mouth. Coming into your Shavasana, so just releasing your arms, releasing your legs. The palms can face up. And find a comfortable position here so that you can create this sense of complete relaxation through the body. Like the body becomes really heavy and like you're able to let go. So ultimately our Shavasana practice is about finding a moment to meditate. So finding a moment of focus. So what's naturally going to happen as soon as you find your stillness, you're going to start to bring your to-do list into your mind, be thinking about the food you want to eat. Whatever it is, as soon as you notice that your mind has drifted off, just start to come back to your body and to your breath. And even if you have to do that 10, 20, 100 times in the next five or so minutes, just keep noticing, keep watching, come back to your body, come back to your breath. And then if you have more time, I really encourage you to stay here a little longer. Otherwise, if you're short for time, just start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And begin to deepen your breath. And then when you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest. And coming up to seated, however you want to get this, you might roll over to one side, you might just rock up. But try to keep your eyes closed and bring your hands towards heart center. And then just taking a moment to thank yourself for your practice. And take a moment also to appreciate your body and all the incredible things that it can do. And we'll end with a big breath together. So inhaling through the nose fully and deeply. Open mouth release. Namaste everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs>